G'day guys, I just want to go through how we configure uh, Clean Flight so that you can have a knob used to um, change your p-values for roll and pitch. Uh, we'll connect the board to Clean Flight itself. Um, as you probably already know, it's a very similar look and feel to uh, Base Flight, but um, there are some subtle differences, and, and the big one is in the adjustment section here. So what I went ahead and did were, uh, was I configured on my Tyrannus um, the right hand switch which is a rotational knob uh, to be uh, available as auxiliary 2 here. And we can see that on the receiver tab so what I'll do is I'll move the switch upwards and move the switch downwards and you'll see that the values will change. I'll just power up the quad so that we see it on base flight. There we go, we see it now, so if I move it all the way up and I move it all the way down, we see that auxiliary 2 moves with that rotational switch. Now we'll use that functionality to be able to change the PID values or the KP value in flight. And so what I've done here is I've set auxiliary 2 uh, and there's up to 8 auxiliaries that we can uh, support, which was the exact auxiliary that I had set in my receiver. Okay, so we've set auxiliary 2. Um, of course, the first thing you need to do to be able to edit this is um, turn on the en uh, enable button. And then what I did was I set the full range. So in other words, I'll be able to slide from 900 all the way up to 2100 and have that uh, pot available in my range. I then decided I wanted to apply pitch and roll P adjustments. Uh, there's a number of other adjustments that uh, are selectable, but in this case um, it looks like the only way we can do P adjustment is by this linked pitch and roll. I'd like them to see if they could actually um, put pitches just a P value and roll as a P value, you know, break these pitch and roll values out, but hopefully that'll come in some future um, releases. But uh, at this stage it, it needs to be symmetric in the change. And what we'll do is we'll set that as the adjustment that we want, and we'll set slot 2 to be used with the auxiliary channel as auxiliary 2. In other words, I'm matching the input as my output. Uh, this actually allows you to um, use one channel to control another channel if you really want, but uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep it nice and simple. So what I wanted to show you is how this actually works. Um, what I've got is uh, the rotational switch sitting in the middle eye indent and if I was to move this up or move this down what it will do is actually change the roll and pitch proportional value. So let's have a look at that. So I'll move the switch um, up so that'll look like that forwards and that's backwards or downwards in this case. Um, I'll move it up and I'll leave it there and we'll look at what it's doing to the PIDs. So we'll see it's 0.6 now. We'll go back to it. I've just got to swap pages so that it um, refreshes. Uh, we'll go back to the receiver. It's still full. Now it's 2.8. Go back. It's 3.5. So it's actually increasing. 3.9. Increasing still. 4.6. And what I'll now do is I'll center it. So what you're seeing is that I've actually moved it from full deflection now back to uh, the middle position. Uh, and what we'll find is that we're sitting at 5.2 for our proportional. Um, I'll just flick across a couple of times. It's still at 5.2 and that's because we've centered our selector. So in other words, when the selector is in the center, it won't change your PID value. But if it selector is out to the right or increasing, it will increase the PID values. If the select is all the way to the left, it's actually going to decrease your PID value. So let's have a look at that. Just to refresh, it was still at 5.2. We'll move the selector down, and we should see, there we go, it's 4.7, and again it's at 4, and again it's at 3.5. So I'll just center that, and we're currently at 2.8. What I want to do is I'm just going to give the um, switch a quick flick upwards, so up and back down, 
and just show you what it does to the PID value. So it's gone a three. So it's it's jumped. What was it? Um, 0.2, something like that. Do that once more. Just up and back down, and it's 3.2. Now, there's no reason that you couldn't put this on a toggle switch, three position switch, and have the middle position as that uh, that neutral position here at 1490. And every time you flicked it forwards, it would uh, increment the PID value up. Or if you flicked it downwards, it would decrement the uh, the PID value. So you know that that's an available option to you too. Um, just be aware that you know changing PIDs in flight can be you know potentially disastrous. So do this in the open field um, for sure. Uh, and I just wanted to show you one thing. So at the moment, it's set to 3.2. My defaults was at four. I just want to show that we haven't saved this and if I power down the quad and I'll just disconnect it from clean flight and I'll just reconnect it again I just want to show you the fact that it didn't actually save any of the settings so there's the pig tuning and there we go we're at 4 okay so there's that uh, confirmation I hope you find that the, this tutorial is useful, um, especially when you're trying to do some initial um, configuration around your PIDs and that you can use your switches and so forth to um, configure these. Uh, don't forget that uh, in the adjustments you can enable additional channels to do you know, other additional features. Um, so you know you might have Auxiliary 3 doing the full range again um, to do uh, your well, pitch and roll adjustment for your eye value so um, that'll be on slot 3 with auxiliary 3 potentially uh, being directly mapped so now if you did that and you set your uh, controller your transmitter sorry to output another switch you could um, play around with your P and your eye in the roll and pitch so once again I hope that's useful um, leave some feedback uh, hopefully I can answer your question Cheers.